Hey, how's it going? Welcome to my channel. My name's Justin, and I play guitar on songs in Nashville. Uh, I've got my other board here, and I wanted to sort of go through it, how I have it set up. It is really effective at everything I want it to do. I have it routed in a way that you might not think is normal. Um, let's talk about the order of things. First of all, I've got everything off. That's my bass, bass tone. I'm playing uh, The Biscuit, my 1955 Telecaster, and uh, I'm running into my Analog Outfitter Sarge right over here. That's going down into my garage into a Morgan 112 cabinet. It's an open back cab, has an ET65. I'm using a Heil PR30 as a microphone on it. It's running into my Chandler TG2 preamp, which goes straight into my Apollo uh, Twin. And what you're hearing is the feed out of Pro Tools. <laughs> It sounds really great. So, <clears throat> here's the board. Uh, I have a fuzz pedal, which I switched this out a lot, the pedal that goes in this spot. But right now, I've got the King Tone um, Germanium Fuzz. I really, really, really like it. It's really great. Uh, and it's going to the Golden Boy, and then the Nordland, and then the EQ pedal, and then there's an insert where I can stick something in the middle of the board. There's an insert on my interface. So I guess I'm really plugged straight into the interface, not straight into the fuzz pedal. And then the back half of the board is basically just the HX. But I have my Echoplex pedal and my H9 inside the HX effects. It's got two loops where you can put pedals and then assign them between the patches of, of your scene, each scene, right? And then this guy, um, this disaster area little uh, micro clock, this sends tempo to the Echoplex, the HX, and the H9. So it's really powerful. Like I can get the tempo from the engineer, dial that in, and everything is locked. And that's a, an important thing because a lot of the stuff that we're doing today on Music Row in the commercial music scene it's very much um, pop in the sense that the tracks have a lot of programming or they have synthetic instruments and it's all grid locked and pitch locked. It's, it's so crucial to be really in tune. And then for your sort of digital time-based effects to also be locked to the tempo at least, you know? So that's how I have it set. <clears throat> so let's go through each of the pedals. And I'll talk more about that when I get to that part of the board. I want to start over and play through everything. So, first. Dry tone. This is a volume pedal, and this is an expression pedal, and this expression pedal controls only the HX. And I use it for um, the number of repeats that I want. I use it for uh, wah effects and uh, all sorts of stuff. I'll go through some of that. So here's the king tone. Um, just a sweet germanium fuzz. How about a little slap back? So I have it set on the zonk setting. I really like that. It's almost like a wah pedal halfway open. It's just, uh, it just adds a nice EQ. It, it sort of sits in its own space in a mix, you know? I like the way it's sort of notched, but here's a um, full, what does that say? Fat full fuzz. Back to the zonk. Very cool. And then this is, uh, what's it called? Vintage. Vintage. Back 
to the zonk. <laughs> Ultra cool pedal. I generally live with the volume and, and tone knobs on this guitar at around 80% or so. It's got a ton of top end and I find that it's still super articulate and woody and has all the sparkle and everything, even with the knobs down, you know. It's really cool. So next is the Jackson Audio Golden Boy. And if you know anything about this pedal, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but it's got different gain modes. I have the like classic Marshall setting, and I think this is the brightest this LED gets. You can gain stage the, uh, the gain on, on the gain channel, not the boost channel, on this pedal. So I still have that slap back on, but um, that's full up. If I press both of these, you can see the LED gets dimmer. Well, that's a, a quarter of the gain. So the brightest LED is wherever I have the gain knob set, which is at 3 o'clock. And then there's a quarter. There's 50%. A little bit brighter, 75%. And 100%, full on. And it's all relative to where you have the gain knob set. Okay, so that's, that's important. Uh, and then I have the boost, and this is the blue boost. It's just, it's just nice. It's just a little more clean. Sounds really good. And then next is uh, the Nordland. I sold all my old uh, Nobles pedals. Maybe I should have hung on to them because they're still going up. <laughs> but I just really like this one. I really think it's great. Also, you know, I think of pedals as tools. I know, I know a lot of people, we discuss gear all the time on YouTube and it's like, well, this thing does this and this thing does this. I... I feel like a better way to think about it is I can get this out of myself best when I'm hearing it through this pedal. I can do this best when I'm using this, you know. I have two completely different boards. You, you saw my other pedal board video with the big board with my old big analog pedals. If you haven't seen it, it's, it's, in, my, it's in my videos. It's a pretty recent one. But if you search by popular, it's one of the more popular ones that will come up at the, at the top. Um, you know... <laughs> This might be a little controversial, but I feel, I feel like when I plug into one board versus when I plug into another, it's one of those things like that quote, wherever you go, there you are. Wherever I go, there I am. You know, whatever I plug into, I sound like me, you know? And <clears throat> it's a good thing to have options and to have a, a board where you feel like you can get your fuzz sound, your nice overdrive sound, you know, you've got a couple options for like a good solo tone, maybe some quirkier stuff, you've got your delays and reverbs to sort of create your ambience that you want, um, time-based things, you know, uh, a good wah sound, whatever. But I feel like, I feel like we get a little too focused on what the pedal does itself. Well, if you don't play through it, it doesn't do anything, right? <laughs> so... I prefer to think of it as, what can I do with this setup? It's more about it being a tool in my signal chain, and what am I capable of getting out of it? And I feel like I can get the same sorts of things out of these two boards. I like the way this is set up because of the clock being run to all of my pedals that have time-based stuff. I like having these inside the loops of the HX, and I'll get to that in a bit. Um, but really, the only thing that's on both of my boards is the Nordland. <laughs> and a tuner. You know, that's the most important pedal ever. Um, but that's the, only, that's the only overlap, you know. I've just got settings in these pedals that I use in my um, Strymon pedals on the other board. And I'm kind of pointing because it's on the floor behind me. Um, and then, you know, I, I have some 
patches in here that I tried to dial really close to my CE1. And I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's more about what you play and about the sounds that you're looking for and what do you think you could dial in quickly. I don't, I don't like to talk about what pedals can do because they don't do anything <laughs> for me, you know, they just, they, it's what I can do with them. It's just, it's a, it's a subtle shift of focus. That's just my own little soapbox moving on. So the Nordland, I like low gain, higher, higher input. I like pushing into the front of the amp. Off. Back on. Great pedal. Great pedal. What, it, what does it sound like? Some weird settings, you know? Like, what, what does this do? That's weird. Kind of sounds like a wah pedal half open. Very cool. So let's go back to what I had. Ballpark. Very cool. I love that pedal. Man, it just sounds like more of the amp. And, and I, I feel like, you know, might be fairly controversial. I had a bunch of old ones, and um, I feel like this just has a little more of the... I feel like I hear more wood of the guitar with this. It's just a little more open, and the extra options to carve EQ and stuff are fantastic. So, very cool. Moving on. Let's go to the HX. Well, I, I, let's go to the EQ. Generally, generally, I have that set as a solo boost. So if I'm playing... You know, I mean, you just get a lot of singing sustain, taking a, taking an overdriven signal and then pushing it with a lot of volume gain into the front of a dirty amp. That's kind of how I, where I live. I like to live on, in going into an amp that's that's already a little bit dirty. Edge of breakup, right? So um, that's how I use that. Sometimes I'll do weird things with it. That's so cool. reverse it. Different. It's almost got this like nasal vocal thing going on. Really cool. And you know, be be comfortable enough with, with your pedals, with your gear to wildly change the settings and not worry that you can't get back to what you liked, you know? I mean, it, that, that comes from just using it Checking it out, trying different settings, kind of filing away in your mind what you really like. And then get, uh, get a little wacky with it. So, HX. Uh, I've had this slapback on the entire time. First of all, this scene, uh, the way that I have the pedals that are inside the HX set up is that since this is a delay pedal and this does everything, delay, reverb, tremolo, um, I have some you know, like a backwards verb in it. There's some like weird synthy stuff that I don't use very often. But my general rule of thumb when I was setting all these scenes up is that this is before this 
and they are right between my last delay and my first reverb, okay? So the, the effects go in order like this. You read left to right, first row, then second row, right? Or top row and bottom row. So on this scene, um, it's, it's my fake goat keeper tremolo, which is just a pattern tremolo. Their slower tempo makes sense. I almost never use that anymore. And this is a standard tremolo with like a 16th note. And then you heard the uh, slap back. What's cool about the slap is I have it set with the expression pedal. So I can get that sort of like trailing. Very cool. And then heel down, back to single repeat, right? So then next, I have this. This is the vintage digital patch, but I called it SDD 3000. It's my attempt at having like a Lanois-ish eighth note delay on my board. So heel down, short repeats. Just a few, right? There's one loud one, and then it's followed by a few quieter ones. And then all the way up. And then it goes back down to the few. You'll notice that the volume changes as well. I also have it set to where when it's when it's all the way up, um, like the repeats, the, the mix of the delay is louder too. So I, I can use this for swells. Kind of hard to play one-handed swells. <laughs> so, going to other scenes. Let's see, I have J.O. Organic. Ooh, what's so organic about this? I don't even remember. So, again, where these loops are, um, it's after the delay, before the reverb. So, this goes wah pedal, tremolo, um, 60s bias trim, which I think is super cool. Another vintage digital patch. Whoops, I touched. These are capacitive. You don't want to try to play this pedal barefoot. <laughs> it's a pain. Um, but after Vintage Digital comes the Echoplex, and then the H9, and then the reverbs. So, oh, you probably want to hear the Echoplex pedal. Let's, let's play that. It's got a nice sound to it. I think it actually sounds really good. And you can press the volume knob and it, it adds some sort of like tape bias to it to make it sound like it's like the tape's a little bit older. Where's a sustain? Is that that guy? So here's the other thing. I can defeat the tempo going into this pedal by messing with the knob, but once I change the tempo, it sends that information back to the, the pedal. So if I want to slap back out of the Echoplex, I can, I can just move the knob to around 9 o'clock is where I kind of know that a good slap exists. Here it is with the tape age on. And then if I change this, it's back to... It's a great sounding pedal, you know? I really dig it. 
So, um, you know, I've got a 63 spring in here. And that's the old M series effects, right? Those are in the HX, all the old, uh, they call it the legacy patches. They sound so much better in the HX. Like this just has such better converters and better processing and, you know, all those things that, uh, if you're kind of a, an old school analog purist at heart, like I am, you're kind of like, eh, <laughs> but it really does make stuff sound a lot better. It sounds light years ahead of my old M9, which I used all the time. And I still know people who use the M9 and they sound amazing with it. But um, having had them sort of back to back, the same algorithms, you know, the legacy effects that were all in the M9 on the HX sound a lot better. It's like it's not aimed at the guitar center crowd who's going to come in and plug into it and want to be blown away by this over the top sound, you know. Um, I still think the presets are over the top and you got to really sort of dial, dial them in, but uh, the quality of, of what this sounds like is, to me, a lot better. So, um, what do I have? Oh, here's some interesting sounds. I have a filter pitch setting. So... Got what I call a VB2, it's the bubble vibrato patch. Little plateau reverb. That's really cool. Well, then I also found some decent overdrive sounds in the HX, and I'm I always thought that I would never even mess with those, but some of the wilder ones are cool. This sort of filter slap. That's the uh, that's the megaphone patch, but I named it a filter slap. And then there's a uh, the thritter fuzz or thrifter fuzz. What's it called there? Real, real big fuzz. It's kind of gated. It's kind of got that um, the Velcro fuzz where it sort of dies, like it's not biased, right? You know, or it's got a battery that's near, nearly dead. Two of them together are really cool. So this is a um, plate, a plate reverb. Bizarre, right? And then I have this harmony. Um, and what key am I in? Oh, I'm in F-sharp on the harmony. I'd change it to whatever key I'm in. So it's just playing a triad. It's playing um, the five below and the third, the fifth below and the third above of each note. So with the plate and everything, you get this sort of Kind of cool, kind of cool. I don't use it a lot. I mean, you start overusing some really wacky effect and then people are like, oh, that's that guy that does that thing. I'm only gonna call him when I want that thing. There's so many mind games in this world. So anyway, what else do I have on the Eventide? First is a... Whoops, I didn't actually select that. It's like a double dual delay where one's a dotted eighth and one's a straight eighth. Standard fair, basic. 
Oh, this is the basic harmonic tremolo that um, that I set up on this pedal. Very cool. What's next? This is weird. Nice. I mean, it's not time-based, that one. Um, Git P, that's a guitar plate. Very cool. Leslie, this is actually a decent... Um, I was like, that's interesting. I was like, yeah, yeah, oil drum, that's cool. Uh, I already did that. The spring on this is a pretty great spring. I've got it set bright and kind of long. Here it is boosted. Um, tap slap, I think is what that's called, but I don't have it set to the tempo. It's just a Kind of weird. Um... Bizarre little tap slap. And then this wah setting, I have it set to be uh, set to the, to the tempo. You can see the tempo change when I move the knob here. It's kind of like the sweep echo on the line six. Um, it's just got a uh, a filter that operates in the repeats only, and it's it's time based, so I can lock it in. The backwards is exactly what you think. And I have it set to where it's like almost completely wet. You don't really hear the dry attack. This American Spring is a super cool sounding tremolo. And the nice thing with the H9 is that, you know, you can only do one effect at a time, but some of the patches have two effects in them. Like that one has tremolo and reverb, so it's nice that it's kind of like my Princeton reverb patch, you know, I can set it to sound like a Princeton with, with those parts turned on. Um, there's a... This is the black hole reverb. Lasts forever. <laughs> There's a shimmer, I never use it. Yeah, I feel like we're all completely... We, we used that effect in this town for like a month and then everyone was like, okay, that's enough. I think we're done, moving on. I don't even know what this is. Yeah, it's just, it's like over the top for me. <laughs> the flute. <laughs> Has a hard time tracking. Bizarre. So anyway, um, I you know, I really like this pedal board. I really liked the way that I have these set up inside the HX and the uh, micro clock controlling the tempo. It makes things things really quick and easy for me on a session. And, um, you know, you might consider, if you're, if you're thinking about the HX, 
consider the fact that you can put other effects inside each patch. And again, no matter what I change to, um, I have this set so that these two occur after the delay and before the reverb of the HX. And so whatever scene I go to, that, that's where they are. And I think it makes a lot of sense. And you don't have to put time-based effects in it. You can put overdrives inside of it and move them around. I could change the order. I can, I could put the Echoplex here and the um, H9 here. Like say I had a box of rock and I wanted wah, compressor, box of rock, and then all my modulation. Like you can do that. You can, you can treat the X HX with these loops as if it's a set of pedals that you can rearrange, right? And you just use a USB cable to plug it into your computer and, and you can drag and drop all the things and it's really easy to use. So there you have it. That's my little board. I feel like I can do just as cool a stuff with it as I can with the big board. Um, sometimes I decide to use the big one because I know I'm walking into something that's not ultra pop and programmed out and it, it'll be cool to have something with like giant old analog pedals on it, you know. But for the most part, this is real small. It fits in a pedal train two bag. Um, easy to carry. Has everything I need. Um, oh yeah, wah sounds. Oh, you were hearing it on the neck of this this guitar, which is the uh, the original wiring. For, it, it's for jazz, right? It's just this. <laughs> so anyway, with the wah pedal, often I'll kind of hit like a. And maybe I'll slowly open and close the filter, but I can use it as a, as a legit wah pedal too, so. There you have it. I hope you all have a good day. Um, I'll see you later. Bye.